Joey here. Hope you guys are doing well. I promised the other day that I would do a video about my sleep system, which I'm trying to dial in. I'm, I'm a big believer in getting a good eight hours of sleep, and I hear that some people sleep uh, more than that, maybe you know nine, even ten hours on the trail because they're just completely wiped after a whole day of hiking. And so I want to make sure that I have a really good sleep system. I'm a light sleeper, I'm a side sleeper, and I find that sometimes I'm just very uncomfortable even in my bed at home. So I am looking for something that's gonna help me really get a good night's sleep when I need it so I can be rested and recharged to go forward on the next day on the trail. So I have all of my gear here. I have two sleeping bags that I'm looking at, uh, a couple of different uh, sleeping pads and uh, some other things. So I'm gonna go ahead and unpack this and I will share with you what I'm looking at and uh, see what you think. So first up are sleeping pads. Uh, this is what goes between you and the ground and there's all kinds of different types a lot of people use the um, The foam mats and other Self-inflating ones, but what I did is a lot of research into the different ones that are out there looking particularly for my own needs of being a light sleeper a side sleeper who tosses and turns a lot so before I went on my first backpacking overnight a few months ago I got this static V by Climate, I found it on uh, Costco for a really good deal. It was uh, with a $10 off discount. It was, I think, about $49, $50. And it's lightweight. It only weighs a little over 16 ounces. But what I didn't realize is that this one is not insulated. And when I was camping out, it was a really cold night. I had cold air coming up through the boards in the shelter. And I was in the shelter because it was raining so hard that my tent, unfortunately, got soaked. But that's a different story. So I decided that I liked the sleeping pad overall, but I needed something insulated. So I tried the insulated Static V, which because of the insulation, it's both bigger and heavier. This one weighs 25 ounces. So if you see them kind of side by side, one's the size of a soda can and one is probably almost twice as big, not quite. Uh, but anyway, I'm gonna roll these out, blow them up and let you take a look and see what the differences are. Okay, this is the Static V2, and I just noticed as I was unfolding this that it has a limited lifetime warranty, so that's good to know. It did not come with any kind of a repair pack if it gets a hole in it, but um, I, if something happens in terms of having it not sealed properly, I, I assume that I can send it back, and also because I got it from Costco, they've got great uh, return policy as well. One thing I wanted to point out is the valve on this. It took me a bit to figure this out because I'm used to the ones where you kind of press down and turn. You just basically pull it up to open it and then push it down to close it. So it's actually really easy to operate. I'm just a little slow sometimes. So here is the Static V non-insulated pad. It says that it takes about uh, 15, 10 to 15 breaths to inflate it. For me, uh, being a woman, I don't have the lung capacity. Maybe somebody who's a, a bigger person. Um, it took me about 25 to get it fully inflated to where I didn't feel like I was bottoming out as I laid down. Okay, so now I have the Climate V insulated pad blown up and it also took me about the same number of breaths. It says on the, the stuff sack that it should take 10 to 15 breaths and I'm hitting closer to 25 to get to where I need to be. But both pads look, <laughs> Scout wants to check them out. <laughs> both pads um, look about the same. They're slightly different on the ends, but the baffles that are in them are, are the same. And um, laying on them, they feel pretty much the same, except the, the red one or red orange one has, that's the Climate V. Uh, I believe I said that I called the green one the Climate V, but it's actually the Climate V2, non-insulated. That's got an R value of, I believe, 1.5. The red one, the Climate V that's insulated, has an R value of 4.4. So uh, both very comfortable, look like they'd be good to sleep on uh, in terms of comfort. They're a little bit noisy. Um, I may have heard some complaints about some of the other pads. This one uh, is a bit, bit crunchy, but not terrible. I don't think it would keep people up in a shelter if you had to sleep with other people. So uh, overall, I'm happy with this, um, the Climate V, which I think is the one I'll go with so I can be a little bit warmer when I sleep. So something else I wanted to point out is that both of those sleeping pads came with a free camp pillow. The pillows that are included are the same for each one, uh, same format. They weigh 2.25 ounces, so they're pretty lightweight and uh, dimensions 15 by 11 by three and a half. So it's actually pretty thick as a pillow. When I used this, what I discovered was that um, I didn't like the texture of it on my face, so I definitely need something 
uh, either a stuff sack or some kind of a sleeping uh, or some kind of a pillowcase that I will put on here. But basically, it's a pretty good size pillow, and I don't know if you can see it, but when you blow it up, it's got a little crisscross. I'll show you that in just a second. So here it is blown up, and it's got this crisscross in the middle that's designed to help you kind of rest your head in there. Um, it was all right. I didn't find it as comfortable as a real pillow, partly probably because it's filled with air. And um, another thing I noticed is that the valve here operates differently than the valves on the mats. This one is a screw valve, so I don't know why it's different. But anyway, it's nice to get an extra pillow if you choose to take that. Uh, I don't know if I will. I'm still trying to figure that out. Um, it's only 2.25 ounces, but it is still you know a couple ounces that I could shave out of my pack. So we'll see if this makes it uh, makes the cut to go in my uh, in my pack for the actual AT. I'll try it out on a couple of my uh, shakedown hikes. So sleeping bags. The first one I got, and I picked this up at a REI garage sale because it only been used once, but I needed something in a hurry. It was a great deal. I think it was maybe 30 or $40. And it's a, a Marmot Trestles 30 regular. Uh, it weighs three pounds, three ounces. So it's not terribly heavy. Uh, and it's got this um, stuff sack that comes with it. You can compress it down. Uh, I found that even fully compressed, it was still pretty big and took up at least probably half my pack. And I have, right now, I have a um, Osprey Cirrus 50 pack. So that was kind of a problem for me but I was willing to make it work. And I have been keeping it hanging up just to keep it lofted. Uh, then I found this um, laundry bag that works great as a storage stack for it. But let me pull it out and I can show you what it looks like and some things that I do really like about this, even though it's not warm enough for my AT hike. So here's my Marmot Trestle 30 synthetic bag. Uh, I wasn't sure if I'd like a mummy bag, but it really wasn't as restrictive as I thought it might be. Uh, I just found that it was very, very cold when we were in the shelter after having rain and hail, even in the beginning of May, it was still too cold for me. So uh, one thing I did really like, well, a couple things actually, it zips on the left and partially down the right. It doesn't go quite as far down on the right. So that's a handy feature if you're not sure which side you're gonna wanna slide out of bed and hopefully the good side. Uh, it also has this stash pocket, which for me was super handy because I wear glasses and I like to have them close by if I need to get up in the middle of the night. So I found that to be great and also liked the configuration of the, the hood here and that you can even tighten it up with these little toggles. So those were very nice features that I liked. Something else that's great is that it is uh, washable being synthetic. But again, it wasn't warm enough for me, so I went in search of another bag, and I'll show you the second one that I got in just a minute. Okay, so my second bag, and maybe not my last, we'll see, is a Kelty uh, Trail Logic bag that I got. And it says on the bottom, it says women's 20 degrees Fahrenheit. Um, and it's um, down, which is really nice. It is super, super light and soft. Comes with the storage bag, so that's great. But it's not actually a 20 degree bag. This one, if you read the fine print, it's actually SB31, which is a 31 degree bag. That's the comfort rating, and then the 20 degrees is the lower limit. So somewhere in between, I do think it will definitely be warmer than the Marmot that I just showed you, and I'm gonna take this out and uh, let's just take a look at it. But um, I'm not 100% sure if this is gonna work for me. I need to take it on some shakedown hikes and see uh, if it is definitely warmer or not, but let's take a look at it. Okay, here's my Kelty Trail Logic bag, and it does have some features that I do like a lot. Uh, the foot has this extra, um, it's shiny and it's a little bit more durable fabric, so that's good. Has a couple of um, tie, or ties for the zipper where you can access it if you want to kick your feet out, you can zip from the bottom. It only zips on the right side. I'm a left-handed person, so I'm not sure if that's going to be awkward for me or not, but we'll find out. It's also got this heavy or fabric around the, the hood, which is nice, and the opportunity to tighten up the hood just like on the other one if you want to tuck yourself in nice and cozy. What it doesn't have is no little magic pocket for me. So I think if I keep this one, I'm gonna have to make one that I can just attach here, maybe with just a little piece of Velcro, uh, something that I can keep glasses in or anything else, you know, if I need a flashlight handy. I like to have those things right close by my side, but um, it's cat approved <laughs> and uh, being down, it's, it's much lighter and uh, very, very cozy to crawl into. So I can see why she likes it.
One other item in my sleeping system is this Alps Mountaineering sleeping bag liner. You can use this to uh, keep your sleeping bag clean inside. I've just laid it out on top so you can take a look at it. But basically, same shape as the sleeping bag, has the same kind of um, shape at the top, opens on the right hand side, and ties, uh, which is kind of handy. It um, has some Velcro there too. And then now the sleeping bag liner is a good foot longer than the pad and the sleeping bag. So I think I could actually cut this off just so across the bottom um, and have, a, you know, save off a few ounces, which I think will be nice. Now this is synthetic. It's, um, I can't remember the fabric. I think it might be microfiber, but I tried a silk one and I should have been clued in by the name of it. It was called a cocoon that I got from REI and it was just a tube of fabric that was very lightweight, soft, and nice to the touch, but uh, made me completely claustrophobic. So I like that this one can be opened on the side. Um, this is very washable and it should be very durable. Uh, I don't know that it adds much warmth in terms of our value, uh, but at the same time, I think it'll be good to keep the bag clean and just add an extra layer. Now I have one more thing for when I get super cold. My extra item, and I think that this may come along kind of as a safety item, um, it's an emergency bivy and these are very inexpensive and I used it when I was surprisingly cold and wet on my overnight hike. It's kind of like a mylar type film and I'm not going to take the whole thing out. It's basically the same shape as the sleeping bag liner but it is reflective. It's silver on the inside and I had to use this inside my sleeping bag because I had on all of the clothes that I brought, my 30 degree bag, my sleeping bag liner, my um, uninsulated sleeping pad and I was still really cold and I, did, I couldn't go to sleep but I was a little worried about hypothermia because I got soaked in the rain earlier in the day. So I went ahead and I was tucked this inside my sleeping bag as a blanket uh, and the proper way to use it is to actually put your sleeping bag down inside it, keeps it dry and keeps you warm but in the pinch in the middle of the night I just sort of tucked it around me as a blanket and it worked really well. So this is, it's very lightweight, I don't have the weight marked on here but um, just a couple of ounces and I think just for peace of mind if I can squeeze it in my pack It's going to be worth having so this would be kind of a luxury item slash extra safety item to include Okay, so I've got the Kelty bag all packed up in its compression sack. It's pretty small a little bit bigger than a football a um, lot smaller than the size of the uh, the Marmot that I showed you so that's a good thing I think this will fit very nicely in my pack I would love it if it was half the size of this, but it, you, there are trade-offs. Um, I would be thrilled if I could find a bag that is maybe a little bit warmer, maybe a 20 degree bag that is also slightly lighter. I don't know if that's possible, but I can keep looking, but I'm certainly excited about trying this one out on the trail this fall. I think it could be a very good option for me on the AT next spring. So I'm gonna test it out. I'll let you know how it does. And if I should happen to find something that I like better, I will let you know about that as well. So thanks for watching. And again, if you've got comments, questions, feel free to put them down in the comment box. If you haven't subscribed yet, please go ahead and do that using the subscribe button. You can also follow me on Twitter and Instagram at Joyful Rambler. And I look forward to seeing you again soon. Thanks.